Hey YouTube, Sign here, back with another Zenless Zone Zero video, and today's topic is one for my free to play bros looking at their next venture because they either got bad gotcha luck in the game that they're currently playing, or just got power crept out of the meta and just want to try something different without having to commit too hard. I feel you guys, and I'm here to talk about the subject of today's video, which will be how good will free to play be in Zenless Zone Zero. There are a few topics I want to address from each of the various free characters you get to the gotcha systems as well. But before we get started, if you enjoy my coverage for Triple Z, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. And if there are any topics you want to see covered in a video, feel free to comment down below or join my discord and message me there. I may or may not make a video depending on how well of a topic I think it is. And one last thing. All my talking points will be based on the final closed beta for Triple Z, and there might be changes with the final release. I want to make this known, as we did have some changes in Honkai Star Rail, and I wouldn't be surprised if they nerfed certain free characters and probably the one I used the most, who we will talk more about when we get to her. But let's first begin with the 5 free characters we get in Zenless Zone Zero. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if we get one more for the final release so that we actually have two complete teams of three. But as it was in the beta, there were only five. They are Ambi, Nicole, Billy, Corin, and Sukaku. The first three, who belong to the Cunning Hears, are given to you at the start as a part of the story, so you don't need to do anything outside of complete the mandatory story quest to unlock these. As for Corin, she was given to you as a free promotion for playing the game and will be given to you the same way as a pre-registration reward. Finally, we have Sukaku, who is given to you for clearing stages of Shiyu Defense, which is similar to Abyss or Memory of Chaos in their respective games. Each of these characters are very unique, so you get a great variety of playstyles to test out, which is very nice. But let's look at each character starting first with the leader of the Cunning Hairs, Nicole. Nicole is an Aether Strike support character. If you didn't already know, a support character's role is to usually have a way to tag in your main DPS safely and cover weakness or provide good defensive options. Don't expect her to deal any real damage as her tag out is where you're going to find most of her value. Overall, she is a decent support unit. But I would say her biggest weakness is that her perfect assist is a defensive assist instead of evasive assist. Since you generally want to tag her out as soon as possible and evasive is the superior option for that mindset to take advantage of the slow down enemies. While one of her biggest benefits is the fact that she can increase the stun damage multiplier of the enemy who is stunned when she uses her chain attack. Because of this, you want her to generally be one of the first characters to get her chain attack off so you can increase your team's overall DPS. This combined with the fact that her chain attack can also suck in enemies is a great combination to burst enemies down. I would say her being the only accessible ether character is a negative, but you would probably run her in the cutting hairs lineup anyways, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. As for her bullet and reload gimmick, she isn't really going to be a damage dealer, so I don't think I really needed to mention this, but she does have an additional gimmick where she can gain ammunition via her special that can be used to increase the damage of her basic attacks. The best support you will get for a while as a free to play player. Next we have Ambi, who is an electric slash stun character and probably going to be one of the more favorite characters to play as her playstyle is very simple and solid with a decent skill requirement so people may gravitate to her for that. One of her biggest weaknesses is one I fell into myself, which is trying to build her as a DPS rather than her role of a stun builder because she feels so good to play, but her damage numbers aren't really there compared to other attack character options. While her best benefit is her amazing dodge counter, up there with the likes of Nekomata and Soldier 11 at some of the best alongside her ability to build up stun very quickly so you can daze enemies. Her chain attack is okay, but nothing really special and neither is her special attack other than the fact that it does come out slightly faster if you used it after Ambi's third hit. While not being too special in these areas, that's okay because what really matters she excels at as long as you're able to dodge well 
and abuse her dodge counter. Now we have the final free member of the Cunning Hairs, Billy, who is a physical pierce attack character and easily the highest damage dealer for the free Cunning Hairs characters. In terms of weaknesses, I don't think he really has any that would bring him down personally or anything to make note of other than I guess his playstyle may not be the most entertaining for some people, I guess. As Billy focuses on shooting enemies, not really getting in your face kind of character and actually wants to be in his crouching shot to deal most of his damage. While I do believe he has a somewhat weird run walk animation, you will get used to it kind of quickly. I think it's mainly a height issue since everyone else is a lot shorter than he is. In terms of his biggest benefit, I would say it's him not having any major flaws. Think of him like a good Shoto character, excels in all departments, doesn't have any major flaws in him, and him having an assist, uh, evasive assist is a win as it allows him to instantly go into his crouching shot the moment he gets tagged in. Easily one of the strongest free characters with a very low skill requirement as well makes him a great pickup. Now that we've finished the cunning hairs, let's talk about our two oddballs, starting with Corin, who belongs to Victoria Housekeeping Company and is a physical slash attack character. Now this is by far the my most used of all the free units, so I really have a lot to say about her. Let's first start with her biggest negative. She really needs another Victoria Housekeeping ally or physical ally to make use of her abilities to lower enemies' physical resistance. This is fine, as Billy does exist as a free character, however, the problem lies in now that you have both of your attack characters in one team, when you go into Shiyu defense, you are extremely one side heavy on DPS, while the other will not have the same chance unless you are lucky enough to pull another attack unit from the gacha or happen to roll into Rena, Ellen, or Lycon. Because of this, I think that's one of her biggest downsides, but there is more. Korra is probably one of the hardest free characters to play due to her very long animation and I mean this girl has a chainsaw. These attacks take a while, watch any horror movie, they don't get cut down instantly now do they? Because of this, she is left wide open for attacks quite often and you really need to be paying attention and quickly respond to attacks so you aren't punished during your animations. This does mean canceling her attack animation at times is key to her success. Now this may all sound bad, but there's an upside. This lady does a lot of damage, and I mean a lot. If you know the boss's attack pattern and when they are open, outside of being stunned, she can really make a huge dent in these enemies, so the payoff is great as long as you're able to understand her weaknesses. While she is the best free to play damage dealer, her power comes at a cost of learning how to play the game properly. Now we are on the final free to play unit and the one I had the least time with, Sukaku. She belongs to section 6 and is a ice strike support character and this is where we get into some major flaws. As a free character, Sukaku isn't a bad character. However, you are forced into a bad situation with her as she doesn't have a team member that is readily accessible to you in either the same ice element or faction, section 6, meaning you don't have access to all of her abilities. Regardless, this isn't too big of a deal since her role is still that of a support character who tags in your DPS, but it's something to keep note of. One of her other weaknesses is the fact that her skill reactive assist is a long animation and can result in you sustaining damage which means you will need to invest a bit into her so she doesn't explode on being hit by enemies even with her 50% damage reduction. I've mentioned this before in previous videos but normally I do not recommend people invest anything into stun and support characters early on and play them as a one hit wonder to maximize damage on your main DPS as they will do majority of the damage, but because she is going to be on field longer than you would like normally, she does require a bit of effort. Honestly, as a support character, I don't have too many positives to mention, and she was definitely on the weaker side when it came to the free units, hopefully they address a bit of her weakness on the actual release. But with 3 out of 5 characters being exceptional, one character being good but really hard to use with huge payoff and one character being mediocre at best or below average, we have a decent free character lineup when compared to other Hoyaverse games. 
But now we have to take a look at how the gacha will be. And this one should be quick and easy. If you played previous Hoyoverse games, things will be very simple. Let's first start with the beginner banner, which will give you one of the standard five star characters guaranteed after 50 pulls and will disappear. These characters are Nekomata, Soldier 11, Grace, Coletta, Lycon, and Alex and Rina, or you can just call her Rina for short. These characters will be available to be traded as well for one time once you hit your first 300 pulls on the standard banner. If you played Honkai Star Rail, these should be familiar as they copied it from there. What gets a bit interesting here versus those games is the trade in items you get for pulling the gacha. It's a lot more generous than both previous games. Before, it would separate your currency based on if you got a 4 star or higher grade dupe or weapon and give currency based on that. And anything 3 star, you would get a different currency. Now, both are combined into one, meaning every pull you do will give you something back. And if you remember correctly, there is the monthly trade in that is always for some reason discounted. They return in this game. However, something special now exists beyond that. That is that you can trade for more pulls even after that, but they won't be discounted anymore. But still, all that additional stuff you would have wasted on character mats, you can now use to trade for more pulls. Great for free to play players. Now, honestly, this does sound a little bit too good to be in the final game since it blows the previous systems out of the water. But if it does, that will mean that the amount of pulls we will get for free will be much higher than any previous Hoyoverse game. Overall, I think the game will be pretty decent free to play wise, but I can see damage dealers being a very huge issue. Since this game has great defensive option, it's going to come down to playing a one hit wonder game to really excel as a free to play player, which should give a great amount of challenge in the later levels of the game. If you are up to the challenge, it should be fun, but I can see some people getting very frustrated as they won't be able to clear things easily. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments down below and thanks for making it this far. I will be uploading more videos, so I do appreciate all and any feedback. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.